Welcome to Anza Borrego State Park in Split Mountain Gorge, one of the more awesome geologic spectacles here in South, Southern California. Um, this is part three of a multi-video series looking at some of the geology in the Split Mountain Gorge area. Thanks for joining me. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey. Happy to have you aboard. And what we're going to do here is look at some of the evidence for these fantastic geologic stories, uh, interpret them as best we can or share them with you. And yeah, so thanks for joining me. What we've got here um, is something pretty spectacular. So I'd encourage you to watch part two if you haven't already, because in part two, we spent some time looking at this type of deposit, this mega breccia deposit, which has big chunks of rock, various sizes, uh, mostly angular. Um, and we call these, these landslide deposits known as a sturstrom. So it's a huge catastrophic uh, landslide or rock slide where all the material came crashing down off the mountain, shattered on impact, and then traveled across the valley floor for a few miles or kilometers. So that's exactly what we see here on the western side of Split Mountain Gorge. Let's go over there and take a quick look just to refresh you, and then we'll need to kind of move back and forth a bit here. So similar to the rocks we saw in part two, um, the particles are almost exclusively made of these granitic rocks. So we can see the, the South, uh, Southern California batholith, the Peninsula Range batholith. Uh, these granitic rocks, which are common in this part of California, is what makes up almost entirely uh, the entire rock body we're looking at here. So here's how things change. Here's the real kicker. Let's just move across this somewhat slowly. And let's see how things change as we move into the shade here. So more of the same, more of the same, big blocks of rock, big chunks of granite. But then as we pan over, uh, things change really quickly. And as we head over to these rocks, just a few steps away, these are do not have the big blocks in them. These are sandstones. So we've got sandstones over here and the contact right about here. So right here, I can see the chunks of granite, um, all that chaotic material glued together. And then right here is the contact with this sandstone. So I'm not seeing all the blocks in it over here. Furthermore, the sandstone also has some nice layering to it. So I can see the bedding of that sandstone. So you might ask, well, what gives? What's what's going on here? Why do, why do we have these two rocks juxtaposed against each other? And to answer that, I think what we need to do is walk back across the wash and then turn and look at it and see if we can really see what's happened to bring these two rocks into position next to each other. Um, you might notice as we look at the other side of the wash that the rocks don't look the same. And that's because this straight section of Split Mountain uh, Gorge follows a fault, a strike slip fault. So the rocks on the left and the right oftentimes don't match up. Let me go back just a little bit further so we can get it all in the frame. Um, and the lighting is not awesome here. So I hope you can see what's going on. So what we have here the bottom, you might see this really pronounced upward flexure of the sandstone. So that's a fold, that's an anticline. Uh, in fact, as you look up towards the top, you might even see a second one up here. And then we have the contact with the, the breccia, which is over here in the sun. So what's the story here? Why would you have folded sandstones right up against these and the contacts are regular right it's not like a faulted contact like we've seen in other places well people have done research on this and here's the story and it's a pretty remarkable one so when this sturstrom when this catastrophic rock slide came down off the mountain to the to the west it impacted these somewhat soft and pliable beds of sandstone 
and it hit it with such force that it caused those sandstone beds to warp and bend without breaking or destroying all of the bedding. So the folding you're seeing here is incredibly localized. In fact, if you look, I know the sun gets in the way, but as we look um, up the wash there, the rocks are really not folded. It's only right here, adjacent to the contact with the breccia, that we see the, the folding. And so the idea is that this sturstrom came down, plowed into these beds of sandstone while they were probably maybe somewhat wet or at least pliable enough that they could bend and deform without completely breaking uh, or, or being destroyed or, or destroying the bedding that we see there. That's, to me, that's a remarkable story. That's really cool. Let's head back over and look at some of the finer details of this exceptional exposure here at Split Mountain. Um, so we've looked at the, the breccia before, not much to expect there, but let's look carefully at the sandstone and see what cool little features we see here. Let me get a good view now that I'm out of the sun uh, for you of the fold. Back up just enough that you can hopefully see this nice anticline, nice little rainbow for you. Hope you're having a rainbow kind of day. Um, right up against this. And what's great about these is you can sometimes see some very cool microstructures in here as well. So we can see the bedding here uh, is exceptionally steep. So you can see that it's nearly vertical right along the contact. It starts to roll over here. Um, and because this sandstone also has some sand and finer layers in it, we might be able to see some really cool little microstructures. Let's see, what do I want to, where do I want to start? Let's come over here. Um, yeah, so this is, this is pretty neat here. So you can see right here, this is near the base of it. So you can see it come across here and it looks like, looks like the letter S, right? So actually the compression has caused it to create this little S fold here in the layers, which is pretty awesome. Um, and then you can see the, the layers bending back down on this side of the anticline. So folding of the layers. Um, if we come over here a bit and then squat down because this these layers are so fine, um, you can actually see some little faults that cut it, right? So the compressed layers actually get shoved up over the top of each other. So some small little reverse faults or thrust faults there. Pretty nice. You can see it in the fine details here as well. Another one over here. Um, let's see what else. Let get back up here. We're just exploring. We're just discovering. And then at some point as we move away from the impact site, we might not see as much. Here's a lovely little uh, reverse fault or thrust fault here. So you can see this side's been pushed up over the top of this side. Again, that happens because of compression, because there was the impact of the, the rock slide caused this layer to compress a little bit, create this little fault or little mini fault comes across here. So the fact that these rocks are so well layered uh, really allows us to see some of these really fine details that you otherwise would sort of lose. Um, and then as we look back this way, this is what you really couldn't see because of the sun, but you can see everything's pretty uniformly dipping now to the west. Not a lot of obvious folding there, although I bet if we went over there and looked at some of the fine layers, we might see uh, some small little microstructures as well. Let's give it one more look here. This is just awesome. I've never um, seen something quite like this. Pretty incredible. Um, little better view of the anticline, the fold, and you actually can see these beds coming across, ramping up, going up over the top. Lovely. As a structural geologist, this stuff's just awesome. But uh, the cool thing here is this was not caused by tectonic forces, but by uh, impact, right? By a, a mass wasting event that actually folded uh, the rock layers. Actually is a little fault if you can see this, there's this little crack coming up here and then it's offset there. So there's a fault 
coming across this way. It's kind of high, so it's a little tough for me to point out. It's a little taller than I am. Um, yeah, you could probably spend a lot of time here looking for these small little faults and folds in the rock layers. Looks like there's another one maybe right in here. There's two layers that are kind of offset. Looks a little bit more complicated. Uh, and then let's come over here right to the the impact site. And here's a little, wow, this is chaos here. So here's a, a, a finer sand layer. We've got this sandstone here, this sandstone above. And in between the two is just a few centimeters or inches of finer grain material. But you can see how it actually thickened right here. We can see the thickness and then it actually gets wider right here. So as this was compressed from uh, this side and this side, actually thickened uh, and folded the layers in there and then it sort of pinches out so it's very likely this sediment was um, at least somewhat saturated not completely per se but it was it was mobile enough that it was able to deform pretty tightly without completely uh, breaking or behaving differently and then we go right into the the megabretsch deposit there megabretsch deposit um, just awesome just like ground zero of a massive huge rock slide that plowed into imagine the density of that materials that plowed into these beds of sandstone uh, and just caused them to get upturned and deformed pretty incredible um geez i'm happy hopefully you are too so hopefully that was helpful really cool story here never seen anything like it again anza borrego state park in southern california split mountain gorge you can uh, if you have a good medium clearance car uh, you can drive right up the wash and it's right here along the side i'll be sure to put gps coordinates in the video descriptions um along with anything else I think might be pertinent. But thanks again for joining me. Thanks again for supporting my channel and my ge geology education videos I put together. And thanks again. Enjoy.